The closing of the greatest show on earth under canvas in mid-July 1956 sent shockwaves throughout the circus world. John Rooney North II was in his teens at the time and remembers it well. I was the only uh, ringling on the lot, so Bob Dover asked me would I lead the spec. The last spec ever under the big top, so I rode one of the King Ranch stallions. That was last year, that was 55 years ago. And somebody mentioned that on the, I think it was July 16th, and last year in this show, I was leading in the spec here. By this show, he means the Kelly Miller Circus. North bought the Oklahoma-based outfit in 2006 after being a rancher in Ireland for a number of years. When I first bought the circus, the question I was most asked was, are you out of your mind? But no, I had, uh, obviously I want to get back to the, the life I grew up in, but also I wanted to, I knew I couldn't equal what my father, my uncle, their uncles did, but I wanted there to be a circus, even in a one ring format, that was the kind of circus I remembered from those days. And I said, if, if I don't come, uh, who's going to do it? Kelly Miller is a traditional classic American circus. Its array of performers includes clowns, jugglers, airless, and animals, especially animals. I wouldn't like to be associated with a show that didn't have animals. Animals to me are essential to the circus. And having said that, the most successful circus man in the world is Mr. Lallybert, and he doesn't even have a dog, so. But to me, they're essential. Animals kind of reflect ourselves. You know, you laugh at what an animal does because it reminds you of what a human might do. And uh, not just children, grown-ups like animals just as much. To me, this is the real American circus, as it was meant to be. I hope there'll always be elephants in the circus. The public likes it. They love the animals. I know you see people out there with placards, but the people going to the circus just walk right by them. And I wouldn't, I couldn't, I wouldn't say you couldn't have a circus without elephants, but I, I'd prefer if you did have them. North readily acknowledges that this outfit is nowhere the size and scope of the old Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey, which his uncle operated six decades ago and which traveled over the rails. We travel by truck, which is different. But other than that, we have a cookhouse, we have a big top, we have a sideshow. Uh, it's you know, and it's an outdoor circus. It's it's only in size that it was different. Although North still lives in Ireland, he also maintains a constant presence on the lot. I go back and forth about six times a year. Between here, I'm about six months on the road. And at certain times I have to be back there in Ireland. And yeah, it's a cattle ranch. Uh, it's where my father's family, during the potato famine, they left Ireland. And in 1953, bought the land back. And he asked me, to, I didn't like the building show. I had no interest in that. So he said, would you like to go to Ireland and uh, set up a cattle operation? And I said, yeah, I go tomorrow. But Uncle Sam said, no, you're going to be a soldier first. So that happened, and then I went. As the owner and producer, North can often be spotted inside the Big Top, which he purchased last year. It was bigger than the old top. It, uh, I like the uh, plain blue inside. The old top had a lot of designs and things, and I thought that took away from the act you were looking at. So my daughter lives in California as an interior designer, so she designed all these colors and everything for me. And uh, it is, it's wider, and the, uh, it looks a lot bigger. It's not that much bigger, but it's, the side poles are higher, so you get more uh, sense of the height of it. I see almost every performance. I, uh, when I was a kid, I used to go every day to the Ringling Brothers. I clowned a bit, but then I'd go in and watch the show. So I, you know, I'm not the only circus owner. Mr. Miller, whose father started this circus, and he owned Carson Barnes, he watched every single show himself. My uncle, on the other hand, watched the opening and probably never saw it till next year when he was 
rehearsing. For important operational decisions, North depends on his general manager, Jim Royal. Well, Jim and I were friends for many years, and we often talked about putting a winter circus into Ireland. But, you know, he was always tied up or something, so when this came up, Jim probably had the best circus job in America. He was uh, managing the Big Apple. And I said, if I buy it, will you manage it? And Jim didn't say, you know, what will you pay me or anything. He just said, sure, John. Uh, Jim uh, is totally in charge of booking, which is very, very important, finding the dates. And he also, I told you, I hire the acts. No, I find them. I leave it to Jim to negotiate with them. So, yeah, it, no, he is super. I wouldn't do it without Jim Royal. So what's his formula for success in this high-risk business? So basically having really good people and not being afraid to spend a bit of money, say, on wardrobe and good acts. And, he insists, circus goers continue to flock to the ticket wagon. Actually, this is, we've had the most ticket sales so far this year, of any year. And, you know, people say, are you having a good year? Yes, but you're never very far from disaster in a tented circus, one tornado. After five seasons of owning a mud show, how does John Ringling North II evaluate his purchase? It's what I hoped it would become. And with the help, not, people always say, you've done a great job. With the help of a lot of people, it has become, yes, what I hoped it would. And we still hope we'll get even better. When I first bought it, Miss Ramirez of the Paris News, Paris, Texas, asked me if I wanted to own the biggest circus in America. And I said, no, ma'am, I want to own the best circus in America. And that is still my ambition. With the Kelly Miller Circus in Dalton, Massachusetts, I'm Lane Talbert. See you at the circus.